ages won't leave me alone. Won't leave me alone. I thought my days of milking quilts were over, just part of my past. Like planting corn and picking cotton, but the images wouldn't go away. So I made another quilt, and then another, and then another. And I've kept on doing it because those images won't leave me alone. I started having visions of quilts. At first, I didn't pay any attention to them. They just kept coming. I tried to ignore them. I said, I really just don't want to do that anymore. I'm done making quilts. Those images won't leave me alone. The only thing I did when I was young to have fun was play softball and make quilts. We worked hard as children. We worked in the field from sun up to sun down. And we went to school only if it rained. I was 12 years old when I made my first quilt. It was a housetop quilt. By the time I was 16, I stopped making quilts and spent my time making clothes. Sometimes we would make quilts in my home economics class but those were always patterned quilts. Those types of quilt patterns were always brought in by other people. That wasn't really my kind of quilt. Someone had given my neighbor, Lily May, a quilt, and I saw it at her house. I went home with that quilt in my mind. Later, I tried to make one for myself from memory. It was made with my colors, and I really liked it. And another one was a wedding ring quilt. I didn't use the book colors, and I did it my own way. I used purple fabric for the background and red, blue, gold, black, white, and pink for the blocks. I just love color and that quilt really stood out. 
Even today, color is the most important thing to me. In 2002, my mom called and invited me to go with her to Houston for the opening of the Quilts of G's Bend exhibit. That was the first time I had really heard anything about the quilt exhibit and book. They mentioned something about the quilts in a museum, but I had never been to a museum and I didn't know what to expect. Then we went to see the exhibit. When I got to my great-grandmother's quilt, I cried. I cried to see our history and our past up on the walls and realizing that she had left a legacy. She was gone. We hadn't forgot her, but no one else in the world knew who she was. And then to see her quilt hanging up on the wall, it was so beautiful. She had been reborn as someone who people were respecting. And all of a sudden, she was important to other people in a way she had only been to us. I felt like in spirit she was there with her quilt and with me. She is now known all over the world in a way She's still alive in that quilt. Coming back from Houston on the bus, I started having visions of quilts. At first, I didn't pay any attention to them. They just kept coming. I tried to ignore them. I really just don't want to do that anymore. I'm done making quilts. I thought, I just have been to a quilt show and that's why the images are in my mind. But the images I was seeing didn't look like anything I had seen in a show or anywhere else. I ignored them, but they didn't stop. So I got a pencil and a piece of paper and drew them out. I thought that would be the end of it, but it wasn't. Finally, I decided I would get some fabric and make a quilt. Most of my quilts are really based on the housetop design, but once I start working on them, they get unhousetop. I never really thought about housetops as my favorite, but they always start out that way. Many times they don't really end up looking like a housetop unless you stand back and look at them. And then you see that it is based on the housetop. There 
are lots of ways to make a house top. They look simple until you start working with them. I've just started a generation of new house tops. Sometimes now I sit down with pieces without a vision or design in mind. I'll use pieces that I've already cut as the basis for my design. Once I started putting the pieces together, I'll see which direction the quilt is going. I'll put it on the bed and stand back and look at it. Sometimes I like it and sometimes I don't. If I like it, I'll keep sewing on it. If I don't like it, I'll cut it apart and redesign it. Or I'll put it aside and come back to it later when I'm inspired. Lately, I've started three or four quilts, but they weren't coming together the way that I thought they should. So I folded them up and put them away where I can't see them. Every three or four days, I'll go pull one out and put it on the bed. If I get a feel for where it needs to go, I'll start working on it again. Those images won't leave me alone. So I made another quilt, and then another, and then another. And I've kept on doing it because those images won't leave me alone. 